Okie dokie. I'm sure I've all had the feeling that no one truly understands you. You, completely unique and special, have a mindset that no one else could relate to. You feel like you're different from the others, maybe even better than them. You alone think the thoughts that you do. I'm sure that you also felt lonely, when the only person that understood you was yourself. How young you were, how naive we were. This is what I would say Flowers of Evil or Aku no Hana is all about. Spoilers ahead. Basic synopsis, Takao Kasuga is a bookworm who adores Charles Baudelaire's Le Fleurs de Mal, which is also the namesake for this manga. Like most teens, he has a crush on the most popular girl in class, Nanako Saiki, going as far as to call her his muse. Uh. There's also another girl, Sawa Nakamura, the complete opposite of Nanako, who Kasuga, along with most, try to avoid. One fateful day, Kasuga spots Nanako's gym clothes left in their classroom. Like a true gentleman, he picks it up and gives it a sniff, but a sudden noise causes him to stuff it under his shirt and run home. Now the proud owner of someone else's garments and unsure how to get himself out of the hole he dug himself into, Nakamura informs him that she knows about his little secret, and that she would like to form a contract with him. I will admit, I have mixed feelings about the first half, everything before the time skip. It's understandable when all of our main characters are basically in a developmental stage. There's little to connect to with our main trio because they're still trying to figure out who they are. I realize coming of age stories are something I struggle with, which makes me worry about myself sometimes. Kasuka is basically an empty slate during the stars, projecting on the things of interest like the books he reads and the girls he finds hot. He hasn't really figured out who he is as a person, which makes him come off as a bit of a pretentious shithead when he compares himself to his classmates. He's like a half annoying, half amusing blob that's desperately trying to take shape. Nakamura feels like an antithesis to the female leads that drag the male recluse out of their shell. Instead of Kasuka opening up and becoming less socially awkward, Nakamura is trying to chip away at his walls to reveal the supposed pervert within, having him wear the stolen gym clothes while on a date with Psyche or vandalizing their classroom as a big old middle finger to society. She's such a confusing character at first, it's hard to understand her motives for her actions, terrorizing the school and the local festival, but I did like that we were able to slowly peer through how she sees the world. Saki is probably my least favorite. She felt like the angel on the shoulder trying to get Kasuka to not listen to the devil perch on the other side, but she feels like a half-done character. Outside of trying to hold onto Kasuka as he continues to fall off the deep end, there's not much else to say about her. I would say that when it comes to these main three, they all feel empty in their own way, which again is understandable as that's the point of this manga and most normal middle schoolers are just not that compelling as people. They're still learning things about themselves, simply focused on whatever interest their short attention spans. I would say this is where it suffers a little, as it's a slow burn of waiting for these characters to flesh themselves out. Nakamura is definitely the one that pushes everything forward as the only one that has any really cohesive desire, simple as it may be. She wishes to be understood, to have someone that she can truly call a friend. Viewing everyone as boring husks wasting away in their rural village, with Kasuga being the only one that could possibly be quote unquote messed up as she is, but basically waiting for the others to catch up to her, even though she herself is not that far ahead as a developed personality. The second half is where the story takes everything from the first half and really just comes together. We've gone for a time skip after Kasuga and Nakamura's failed stunt of setting themselves on fire to escape their boring town, and Kasuga has moved away, back to being a recluse, instead now as a high schooler. This is where we meet with the other driving character, Aya Tokiwa. Another popular girl like Saiki, Kasuga at first doesn't hold much interest as we all know what happened the last time he was interested in a girl. But he starts to see her differently after meeting her in a bookstore, reading the one and only Les Fleurs de Mal. Tokiwa is definitely more fleshed out as a character compared to Saiki and even Nakamura, which is a very unfair comparison to make when, of course, high schools are going to be more put together compared to middle school brats. But even the simple interest of secretly liking and wanting to write a book just makes it so much more compelling to me. I should preference that I don't think I would change anything about the first half. I think the story as a whole works because of how the middle school arc plays out. Flowers of Evil is a coming of age story, 
about children trying to figure out what they want to be through childish pranks and attempted self-mutilation. Kasuga is a shell in the beginning, slowly being filled by Nakamura's toxic relationship before being pushed away before it's too late. Once again a floating carcass, he learns how to pick himself up with the help of Tokiwa, eventually forming a much healthier relationship and gaining the courage to face his past head on instead of running away and letting it continue to drag him down. I'm really happy with the ending for this manga, as I've also been reading Blood on the Tracks or Chi no Wachi, which has me constantly on edge about how Kasuka and Tokiwa's relationship will actually develop. Oshimi Shizuo's strength is definitely their ability to draw metaphors. The visual representation of how the characters are feeling really sells his stories, which are often emotionally draining or traumatizing. You can definitely see this in Chino Wadachi as well, using his unique way of drawing expressions to add an element of horror to his works. I also think Oshimi Suzuo's struggles with switching tonality, which you can see in both Akino Hana and Chino Wadachi. The difference between the intense emotional highs and the more somber melancholy moments I can definitely whiplash a bit too hard, leaving me confused over how I should actually feel while reading his work sometime. I still adore him as a writer and I very much enjoyed my time with Aku no Hana. Thanks for watching, we'd love to see your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe for more content, let me know if there's something you'd like me to cover. I like talking about anything that interests me. That's what I want to say, I hope you all have a good rest of your day.